intensifying chemotherapeutic strategy is the topic uh, that's given to me so we know that wait and watch is one of the protocol that has come up and for that as viraj told we need a complete clinical remission or in surgery if it is done we need a pcr so how to intensify chemotherapy and get there is what we see so the problem with uh, rectal cancer even if you treat conventionally is the distant metastasis which is actually four times greater than the local recurrence and we need to improve on that and how we do that is by the conventional method of uh, you know decision makers in other way, other points to be looked at is to uh, how we can improve upon the new adjuvant chemo rt by intensifying the chemotherapy and then once we intensify how do you sequence it before K rt or after rt and how many cycles uh, and how many agents as uh, viraj was mentioning and uh, whether we can do it all after surgery as ram was mentioning operate all and then after adjuvant whether we can intensify and get away with it that we will look at and what is the real evidence of the triplet or the systemic therapy in the intensification we will look at it so Uh, if you look at starting from the adjuvant, let's say the surgery is done, then it comes from the age-old Kusar data, which showed that it may be useful to use 5-FU-based therapy. But you can see that only 6% of the patients actually received new adjuvant. So that's not good enough when we know that majority of the patients are going to get new adjuvant therapy. So if you look at uh, the meta-analysis that is after surgery, the pooled meta-analysis again showed that the 5-FU-based uh, chem adjuvant chemotherapy may not have an impact as far as rectal cancer is concerned. So we don't have a DFS or overall survival. So after, you know, if you do as an adjuvant setting, that is after a new adjuvant CTRT, if you have a large burden disease like YPT34 or high nodal disease, then this trial will help us to say that Falfox may be better than 5-FU uh, leucovarin alone. So this is one way of intensifying. So if you have high nodal positivity or high tumor burden after new adjuvant, if you use doublet or intensify to a doublet, you will have survival benefit as far as this trial is concerned. So, oops. Yeah, so the practical recommendation would be uh, if you are doing a, a straight away new adjuvant CTRT and if you have YP stage 2, you can discuss Aloda or a single agent with very limited benefit. If you have a high nodal positive disease, again we are in a slippery slope because we don't have real uh, evidence for escalation and you may discuss this one trial and tell that you can give fall fox. So this is where as far as we need to look at uh, that there is no real benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy after uh, new adjuvant CTRT and then compliance will be an issue and completion of treatment is also issue as far as when we look at adjuvant chemotherapy. So then the concept came up as we give everything up front. So that is the uh, you know last four years we are looking at total new adjuvant. So either you give chemo before your CTRT which is either long course or short course and then do the surgery or you give finish your long course or a short course CTRT, give chemo and then do the surgery. So the rationale is very clear. As I told earlier, the distant metastasis is what we need to tackle. So if you use early systemic therapy, that might be addressed. And uh, many patients, as I told earlier, adjuvant therapy, they will not tolerate. So we'll have more compliance and completion rates if you use TNT. And as we all, if you are looking at a non-operative method or PCR is your endpoint, then you know that the TNT will give you much higher clinical complete response and possibly a high PCR and possibly a better survival. So that's how the rationale is. So whether that is coming as evidence, you can see that the total neurogen therapy, the pool data shows that there is definitely improvement in disease-free survival. There is definite almost doubling of pathological response. So now almost one in three of your patients can have complete pathological response if that is your endpoint. So if you are looking at PCR and improved survival, TNT would be a better option. And uh, if you are looking at a sphincter preservation surgery, it is plus minus as far as uh, TNT is concerned. So if you use 
TNT, one thing is very clear, you can have improved DFS, you can have a better PCR and better compliance than adjuvant therapy and there is one uh, interesting paper which showed that it may be more cost effective than giving an adjuvant therapy. But of course, there is no impact on the overall survival and there is no clear benefit in a sphincter preservation approach. This is a, a which changed the standard of care as far as uh, the TNT is concerned. The Rapido trial which looked at short course CT RT, then six cycles of Capox and then surgery and that was uh, 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 you know compared with the uh, conventional arm and you can see that there is actually a doubling of the PCR you have 28 percent and your DFS is also much better so this so it's a one way of escalation so you give six cycles of Capox for everybody uh, once you patient fits into this selection criteria so that you know many times we would have given only CTRT and if there was a, it would have been a de-escalation adjuvant approach and they would have received a, a lesser chemotherapy but then we need to again know that it may not improve the overall survival so as of now we don't have rapido data also for overall survival so what are the escalation whether we can do more intensive than rapido and c so one option is to do a triplet chemotherapy again the rationale is okay, most of the treatment failures are outside your pelvis and you can they are still dying of metastatic disease and current treatment may not be in enough and we know we have some data that if you add along with chemo rt there is actually detrimental benefit and intensive chemo chemotherapy earlier will have better compliance and completion rate. So this is uh, this idea looks good. So whether it works well in stage 4 setting or advanced setting we know that this is a study which looked at significant 4 month disease control rate. So if you are looking at a symptom control or disease reduction 94 percent can be achieved by using a triplet. So this formed the basis of doing what is called as the prodigy study which looked at uh, if you have a locally advanced rectal cancer, you give folfirinox, that is a triplet regimen and then finish off with your long course RT and then finish if you are not having a good PCR, then three months of adjuvant folfox or capox. This was compared with the long course CTRT followed by capox. So what we wanted uh, was if it is the PCR, it has actually 28% more than double. So that has, so if PCR is your endpoint, triplet therapy or intensifying chemotherapy may be beneficial but then again it did not have OAS benefit and very little uh, DFS benefit. So this is one way. So maybe this sort of trial will tell us if you, you can randomize to long course CTRT with a doublet or a triplet and then follow it up with the primary endpoint of a complete clinical response. This may tell us what is really happening as far as doublet versus triplet argument is concerned. So again whether if you are using doublet or triplet, sequencing also matter. Whether you give chemo followed by CTRT or the other way around. And if you look at the chemotherapy first approach, the main trial again is the Prodigy, which is the triplet therapy upfront. If you look, and they looked at uh, the primary endpoint as the DFS, and. Uh, <coughs> can you move to the next slide, please? So if you look at the efficacy, it actually is uh, borderline and it may help us in giving the chemotherapy first approach. Uh, but look at the chemotherapy second approach, that is the Rapido approach, where you actually give long course CTRT and then follow or short course CTRT, then give around four to six months of chemotherapy. So the rationale here is you get away from RT as much as possible. So if, you're, if, you're, if your interval is more than 12 weeks, then your chance of getting a complete CR, or clinical response for a non-operative management or a PCR, if you are looking at that endpoint, will be better. because you. Feel finish off your radiotherapy and then you give enough interval and that time you finish off your chemotherapy. So that looks again promising with uh, toxicities are also better as far as the CTRT toxicity is concerned and uh, you may have a, an improvement in DFS as well as overall survival. So this, this sequencing also we need to see and this is the OPERA study design which will tell us again whether how to sequence an intensified chemotherapeutic approach and get a uh, so, you know uh, the benefit of uh, 
chemotherapy so this also showed some improvement in the distance free survival and disease free survival with a reasonably good toxicity and more importantly if you have this approach that is the opera approach where you give chemotherapy after chemo rt your tme free survival is very very significant so if you are looking at non operative management this may be one way to go um so chemo first versus chemo second you have the advantages and disadvantages as i told and as viraj mentioned as the uh, rule is go for immunotherapy as a combination so you try the uh, addition of pembrolizumab here they were not enriched with their any biomarkers so this was not very significant by adding uh, uh, an immunotherapy but there is some data with other agents like avelumab coming up maybe so that may be a future if you can select the patients better with a better biomarker so that is another way of uh, escalating <coughs> can you move the next slide please yeah so i think this would be the ideal way so you you actually have a ct dna in hand and then based on the ct dna at the end of ctrt end of your doublet and then you decide whether you escalate to a more aggressive approach based on your ct dna based uh, this thing this would be the ideal study design and uh, with the ct dna data coming in this may be definitely a reality for us so you can look at uh, intensifying based on the ct dna approach so you personalize your therapy by actually escalating chemotherapy by the duration and sequencing it better and uh, definitely you will get better tumor control better dfs and distant metastasis rate and to an extent our patients um, i think the first speaker told uh, medical oncologists become a minority let us hope that rectal cancer their main role may be biopsy the surgeons may end up in doing a biopsy for us and then we'll take care of the rest <laughs> maybe maybe we don't need a biopsy also we may do a liquid biopsy and get away <laughs> thank you thank you so much for uh... thank you